The SecureSpan gateway can use remote caching to share session and other common information within a clustered environment, reading and writing this information far faster than using a shared database for the same information. Okay, so now that we displayed the setup on the whiteboard, I will show you how remote cache servers can be accessed through the gateway. In this case, we will use two gateways. And after um, uh, assertions were installed on the gateway, the next step is to configure the server that shall be used. So I'm using this gateway, which will be referred to as gateway one, and we'll go to tasks, additional actions, manage remote caches, and I've already configured a memcached instance. So it's uh, possible to just edit these values. You um, have to set a name for this configuration. You can set the, select the type of uh, remote cache you want to use. Um, as I said earlier, we um, support memcached, terracotta and coherence. You can set a timeout and you have to set the server endpoint. So if you create a new one, if you want to add a configuration, you just give it a name. You select the type, set the timeout, give, a cache, give it a cache name and a server URL. So when this is done, we are more or less ready to go. So I've got a folder, remote cache demo, and I've configured two endpoints. One is called remote cache demo retrieve and one is called remote cache demo store. We will access those endpoints using a browser later on. Now I will show you how they are configured. So if I open the store endpoint, you will see we are setting a test message for this demo, which, is, uh, which contains two variables provided by the gateway. One is the gateway time and the other one is the URL. So if I call this endpoint with a browser, the URL that I've used will be stored also. We also need a key to this entry. So a cache works like a hash map. You've got a key and you've got values. And in this case, we are passing in a parameter called key and we'll use that as our key to cache entry. Okay. And here we've got the remote cache assertion. You can give it a name. You can select one of the configured remote cache servers. In this case, it's just one. You have to set the key under which you will store the message, a maximum age for this uh, value and a maximum size. And do not cache so false. OK, we'll check that. So if I click OK, I will show you the message that will be returned after this endpoint got accessed. So we will return a message SSG1 just to make sure that you can see the difference between the two gateways. Um, and then we will print out a few details about the message that was stored to the remote cache. So it's the message itself, it's the name of the cache and the key. If we now look at the retrieve endpoint, it is nearly the same. We are using the parameter key as the key to our cache entry. We will configure a uh, lookup assertion which accesses our cache with this instant of this instance and the key that we have set. Another menu is to select the target message. So the content of um, the cache found under the given key will be stored in this message, test message. And we will then also, again, display the result of this uh, action. So it will say SSG1 again, and message was retrieved from. And since we are storing the URL as part of the message, please look out for two different URLs. So we've got SSG1 and SSG2, and um, the used URL will be reflected in the message that we are storing and retrieving.
So here we've got two browser windows. This browser is accessing this gateway named SSG SPR Mac Verification and the other gateway is called SSG SPR Mac Release. So you can see that we are accessing two different gateways and we will start um, by storing a key through this gateway. Um, you can see there's this URL remote cache demo slash store and the parameter key which is, has got the value demo. So if I refresh this page you don't see a lot that happens except for a time so it's hours, minutes and seconds as we configured it earlier. And now we will move over to this gateway which will then retrieve the value using this key. And let's see what happens if I refresh. So you can see the last message that was stored through this gateway number 2 was 1924.19 and this URL and it was retrieved through this gateway and you can see it's the same value 1924.19 and this URL and since this is not the URL of this gateway it's not stored by this gateway number 1 but by gateway number 2 and we can certainly do it the other way around if we say store this gateway that's the message to be stored and if we use retrieve on this one we will find the message that was stored on gateway 2 stored by message 1 by, by gateway 1 sorry so I hope this helps to understand why remote caching is a very, very powerful feature.